The Matrix Resurrections. Let's talk about it. It's hard to convey to someone who, you know, I, I mentioned this in the written review. It's hard to convey to someone who wasn't around in the early 2000s um, or like, yeah, mid 2000s, just how huge the Matrix trilogy was. It was massive. The first movie basically redefined, you know, science fiction blockbusters for a while. Um, this was, you know, this brought kind of a ghost in the shell live action ghost in the shell kind of vibe to um to hollywood which you know didn't have movies like that very much and uh, there were a lot of copycat movies after that you know movies everyone was trying to do the matrix after that you had ultraviolet uh you had freaking um eon flux you had <laughs> so many movies that were trying to do the matrix thing uh, and none of them did it right. Those movies were good. Like the first Matrix movie is still, you know, beloved by everybody. It's still kind of a sci-fi masterpiece, right? It just had a really cool concept, uh, groundbreaking visuals and special effects, and just a very cool vibe all around. It, it was cyberpunk done right. Like it was done really, really well. It wasn't just people typing at their computers and that's it. Uh, which was cyberpunk up until that point, pretty much. It was just an instant classic. Now, The Matrix Reloaded was huge as well, but in a different way. It was huge in that it was the first sequel of this movie, so everyone flocked to see it. It was a big movie, huge budget, a lot of things going on in the movie, not all of which particularly good, but there was some good stuff in that movie. You know, people remember Matrix Reloaded fondly, and rightly so, I would say. You know, there's some, there's a lot of stuff in that movie. Like I said, not all of it really, you know, sticks. Uh, but there's some cool ideas in it, and the car chase is unparalleled. Just the car chase in that movie is just really, really, really legitimately kick ass. Um, there's some good ideas. There's some problems as well with The Matrix Reloaded. I think we have kind of rose-tinted glasses looking back at this trilogy sometimes. Uh, it's a fun trilogy, but it has its problems, okay? Even The Matrix Reloaded, I remember watching it back in the day, having a lot of fun with it. But at the same time, you know, every so often there'd be an effect in it that looked like a video game. Didn't look very good at all. Uh, the movie felt a little bit bloated. There was too much in there. Uh, and the third movie... Uh, in comparison, felt very kind of bare, and um, I was pretty bored watching Matrix Revolutions, even though it's it's not that bad of a movie, it's just a little bit um, too much happening in the real world, you know, compared to the things happening in the Matrix, which are actually the cool stuff, you know, happens in the Matrix, right? Um, the stuff in the real world, you kind of, you kind of hear for it, but not really, Okay. Uh, and the third movie spent most of its time in the real world. And stuff in The Matrix was very, uh, <laughs> very random. I thought that rebooting this franchise specifically was, I mean, literally and figuratively, uh, was actually a good idea. I think, you know, this franchise had potential to come back with a bang. Uh, there was a lot of things they could have done with uh, The Matrix Resurrections. Even the title is kind of cool, honestly. Um, I think there was a lot they could have done with it, considering that the third movie basically gave the franchise a free pass to get a reboot, because it ends with the architect uh, wanting to reboot The Matrix, but change a few things. So I, I feel like the Wachowskis had a lot of opportunities to, um, you know, expand on their universe and uh, find some cool stuff to do, just flat out, okay? Unfortunately... With the departure of Lily Wachowski from the project, so already one of the Wachowskis was gone, and uh, we're left with Lana Wachowski making this movie, and even though it looks like she's sometimes having a good time with it, she mostly kind of hates this project. And this kind of passive, aggressive attitude comes through in this movie quite a bit. And it doesn't translate very well into good popcorn movie entertainment, all right? This movie is a very expansive movie. This movie pretends like it's some kind of, like, indie movie, uh, you know, with, like, uh, you know, trying to explore a little bit the kind of studio system and... Uh, you know, the, the whole idea of, of rebooting movies. But it's actually like a $200 million uh, blockbuster movie. 
you know, and you would never know from the first half of this movie that, you know, the budget was as high as it is because this movie ends up feeling a lot like a freaking Netflix original movie with like, you know, a third of this budget. That's not even the worst part of this movie. This is just kind of an aspect of it that's just you'll notice pretty quickly. Um, this movie, right off the bat, uh, makes a point of showing that it's not going to try and be the other movies, okay? Uh, you've got this new character called Bugs, played by, um, I forget her name, uh, the girl from, um, the girl from uh, Iron Fist. She's playing a character called Bugs, who is trying to get Neo and Trinity out of the Matrix, okay? And she's watching old code. And by that, uh, the movie means old scenes from the first movie. Okay, so you, it's really weird. Like, uh, she's watching old code that has been altered and changed of Trinity in that first, in that opening scene when she's fighting the agents. And it's not Carrie Ann Moss, it's some other actress playing Trinity. And uh, she's following the action. And uh, eventually, she encounters a program uh, that is Morpheus, but it's not Morpheus. It's a Morpheus program. But it's not really linked to the real Morpheus, okay? It's um, different Morpheus, played by uh, Yahya abdul Mateen II, who uh, is quite good in this movie. I mean, he's all right. He's all right. And then she allies with him to try and get to Neo and Trinity, who are kind of stuck in the Matrix again in different roles than they were the first time around. Originally, Thomas Anderson, a.k.a. Keanu Reeves, was... Um, this kind of office worker, you know, working in a cubicle, boring life, you know. But in this, in this Matrix, in this version of the Matrix, he is just this kind of guy kind of floating through life, you know, as a game developer. And the games that he develops are basically the Matrix movies, which is a little bit confusing, let's be real. Uh, they use, like, footage from the Matrix movies as game footage. And it, it's like, what? Like, I, I didn't really get that how that works very much like they literally it's kind of lazy like instead of like making kind of like a video game looking versions of of the original matrix scenes they just play the scenes from the movies which it just seems really weird um so thomas anderson has developed these games i guess and he's you know he spends his days you know eating blue pills and going to see his analyst, uh, played by Neil Patrick Harris, who is also quite good in this movie. And um, But there's something screwy going on, obviously, because it's the Matrix. Uh, Trinity is called Tiffany in this movie. And um, she is, you know, she's unaware of, of uh, Neo or anything that happened. Okay, She knows about the game that Thomas Anderson has developed. Uh, she feels a kind of connection with him because they meet each other in a cafe once in a while. I think the cafe is actually called something really silly. It's called like Simulate, uh, which is the worst joke in this movie. Yeah, they have a chat. And and most of the first half of the movie, honestly, there's not much going on there. It's very repetitive. It's uh, kind of Thomas Anderson's life, you know, uh, not knowing anything about the Matrix. But whereas the first Matrix movie had... All this kind of stuff was like peppered in there was cool action sequences. You don't get that here. You don't get that in this movie. The first, I would say, half, uh, I would say almost like three quarters of this movie, not much action in there. And the action that there is is awful. It's really quite bad. Initially, when I was watching the movie, I was like, well, that's a little underwhelming. It's not underwhelming. It's bad. It's not good action. It's it's very like it's either you know people fighting in the warehouse, uh, just kind of you know. Again, it feels like a Netflix movie. Um, it feels like that Cowboy Bebop uh, movie they made. Or it's shot outside and uh, the choreography is not particularly good and it's not shot particularly well. It sort of feels like the Matrix movies, but not really, because there's nothing really inventive about it. You don't get the cool car chase from the second movie, okay? You don't get the cool uh, fight at the end of the first Matrix movie. They try to do that a little bit at the end of this movie. At the end of this movie, you get some cool action scenes, okay? 
Uh, they're very brief, but they're quite well done. There's problems to that as well, but we'll get to it. There's a, there's a lot of problems to go through. This movie is not good. I'm going to tell you right now, this movie sucks. Um, and that's heartbreaking. This movie is worse than Matrix Revolution. So if you don't like Matrix Revolutions, strap yourselves in, people. This is, this is, you're going on a weird, not so wonderful ride. Um, there's a lot about this movie that just feels um, like it tries too hard. And there's a lot about this movie that feels like it doesn't try at all. So Lana Wachowski is really hell-bent on this idea of showing that she really didn't want to make this movie. She really didn't want to make this movie, okay? So she has characters in this movie who are very disinterested in anything that's going on. She has characters in this movie who are interested in this idea of rebooting the Matrix or whatever, or making a new Matrix game or thing. They're very excited about it, but they're, they're portrayed as ridiculous. They're portrayed as morons. Uh, there's one guy, you know, he's like a head of the game studio or whatever, who is just kind of like talking about, what, what if there's a new kind of bullet time, you know? Uh, and there's other people around the, the boardroom table coming up with other ideas. And those guys are portrayed as being morons and just really like obnoxious and dumb. But I feel like that's really, really clumsy of Lana Wachowski to do because I feel like it also pokes, uh, it also kind of, makes fun of the fans in a lot in a very kind of like not very respectful way you know like you've got fans who are expecting something from this movie and fans expecting something from this movie is normal they should be expecting something from this movie because it's a fucking matrix movie okay so if lana wikowski didn't want to make this movie she should have not made this movie that's it she should have either not made this movie or let someone else make it and then you can be like, then you can trash the movie. Then you can be like, hey, I didn't really want them to do this. Uh, I didn't do it because I didn't believe in it. And it sucks. That's their problem. But, you know, Lana Wachowski made this movie. So you now you can't really poke fun at us for expecting something from it. And I think that's huge. I think that felt really clumsy and just really unfair. And... Um, yeah, I didn't really like that at all. Uh, this movie, honestly, should have had some cool new bullet time. It should have had something. It should have been good, at least. And it wasn't. It's got some okay ideas to it. I like the idea of, uh, I like the idea of, a, of a program, you know, um, of the Matrix being changed. Like a new, you know, you've got the analyst who's kind of a program himself who is a kind of a nefarious program who's running this whole thing. I like the idea of characters that you know from the first movies being interpreted differently by the Matrix. Um, I even like the idea of there's this kind of like, you know, um, of Trinity having her own powers. Uh, I think that's cool. I there's, there's some ideas I can dig in this movie. They're just not executed well at all. And, um, and they're not executed honestly as well. It's just kind of like... This movie just like makes a point very early on of saying that you're stupid for expecting it to be good. Um, and then the movie uh, kind of tries to be good towards the end and fails. Um, so it's like either you're going to try and be a typical Matrix movie or you're not. Just be a good movie. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if the whole movie is just a boardroom meeting of uh, Neo and Trinity around the table talking about how the Matrix uh, should not come back as a movie. If, if as long as there's some fucking, into, <laughs> as long as there's some cool ass action sequences in between, as long as there's some good ideas thrown in, I'm up for it. Uh, but if it's literally just like this really uneven kind of like story, I'm just like, man, this was this was a nightmare to sit through. You kind of stick with it for a while. This movie, I was sticking with it for a while. Because I had a feeling, you know what, I like Lana Wachowski as a director. I think she can do something with this. Even though this is kind of slow moving uh, to begin with, where it's literally just like they, they really hammer on the the idea of like Thomas Anderson kind of like sleepwalking through his life. Um, it feels like the movie can, is kind of makes the point way too many times. And it, it just becomes very, very boring. Um, by the time Neo is finally extracted from the Matrix, you're kind of like... You're ready to go. At this point, you're like, all right, show me something cool. And the movie fails time and time again to do that. 
Uh, it takes a while for Neo to get extracted from the Matrix. Uh, very, very boring up until that point in the movie. And then you introduce to the real world. Years have gone by. Neo is extracted from the Matrix. Niobe, played by uh, Jada Pink Pinkett Smith, is caked in old woman makeup. And it's not convincing in the slightest. Uh, there's an idea that's kind of cool, which is the humans in the real world are working with machines against the squid machines, which I thought was kind of an interesting idea. Unfortunately, those machines, they're basically kind of like, they look like, uh, they look like shit. It's like basically like a person in the Matrix. It's like a video game character, except, uh, you know, it's like a rend it's like a hologram kind of thing with like little mercury bits coming together. Um, it doesn't look good. It's a really crappy effect. Uh, and it kind of ruins, <laughs> kind of ruins what they were going for here. And then there's the whole idea of trying to extract Trinity from the Matrix, which is a little bit more difficult because she's really kind of like the analyst, really has her there for purpose, and it's kind of hard to get to her and convince her that this is a good idea. So it could go either way. Um, and then they hire uh, Priyanka Chopra, plays this woman like standing by a well who in in the world in the real world is basically like a manta ray like a floating manta ray machine i don't i don't know i don't know what that's about really very odd very odd. <laughs> but she's depicted as a human being in the matrix whatever whatever fine whatever the extraction of trinity is actually it takes a long time and it's not very rewarding um you get a cool action sequence at the end with the bike where Neo and Trinity are on the bike. Uh, they're getting chased by agents. And uh, there's this cool thing which is where they become zombies, where the people in the Matrix can get hacked into and become zombies and they become agents, basically. But I feel like that's something that was already in the original Matrix movie. So it's not even that groundbreaking. It's just, yeah, it's just kind of a different take on it, I guess. And they do the whole thing about... Um, all these people in the Matrix get hacked to kind of fall off buildings onto Neo and Trinity as like kind of suicide bombers kind of thing. And it's even that doesn't feel very original because we had exactly the same kind of scene in uh, one of the Fast and Furious movies with um, Charlie Theron kind of hacks into all these like parked cars to crash into the team. It's the same scene, except it's with agents and it's in the Matrix. Uh, so even that scene, which is good is not particularly original. Uh, and then you have the scene on the rooftop at the end with uh, Neo and Trinity confronting, you know, the analyst and stuff, and uh, Trinity kind of develops her powers, etc. Um, and that that's just okay. That's nowhere near... You don't have an iconic moment. You don't have an iconic moment like Neo going... Or, you know, anything like the fight uh, between Neo and... Um, and uh, Agent Smith in the subway station, or uh, they try to recreate moments from the original movies, and this is part of this kind of cynical aspect of this movie, where like it recreates certain sequences as kind of a tongue-in-cheek, uh, yeah, see, it's not the same as it once was. And it's like, yeah, I agree, this movie sucks, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I feel, I feel like the movie is trying to make a point about how there's no way we could have ever, you know, lived up to those other stories you know that's in the past uh and it's ridiculous to even try but then you're trying it but then you're actually doing it in the movie and it's it sucks like it's it's boring they try to redo the morpheus versus uh neo you know like training scene uh they kind of try the subway thing as well a little bit with this kind of fake agent smith that we get there's no sight of lawrence fishburne no sight of uh, hugo weaving Half of the cast is not returning in this movie. There's not even a hint that they will return. Uh, it's just very much a Neo and Trinity centric movie. And I feel like that would have been, that's actually okay. I don't mind that too much. Um, Trinity, you know, as played by Carrie Ann Moss, is good. Man, I gotta tell you though, holy shit, Keanu Reeves is terrible in this film. And I know Keanu Reeves is not exactly an acting powerhouse, right? He's given some decent performances in the past. I think he's great in the Bill and Ted movies. I think he's great in Devil's Advocate. I mean, he's great in some movies, okay? He's just awful in this one. Awful. And not even in a kind of like wooden Neo kind of way. Because Neo, even in the first movie, is sort of 
a little bit wooden kind of character. It's a very candid character, but it works for that character. No, no. Keanu Reeves is just bad in this movie. And it's heartbreaking because I kind of felt like Keanu Reeves would have been having fun with this movie. And he is having a lot of fun in the John Wick movies, for sure. Uh, in this movie, though, man, that was a rough performance. One, I think it might, if it's not his worst performance, it's definitely one of his worst performance ever. Oh, yeah, one of his worst performances ever, 100%. And it's heartbreaking, heartbreaking. And even the the cast members who do a good job here, like Neil Patrick Harris or Yaya abdul Mateen II and Carrie Ann Moss, they're okay, but they're doing their best with the material that they're given. And I think if they had been given like a really cool fucking movie to um, to act in, they would have nailed it. They would have nailed this shit. But in this particular movie, they're struggling with bad lines and just a bad storyline. It's just, this is huge disappointment. This was honestly the biggest disappointment uh, from 2021 for me. It's not one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But I think this movie is even worse than something like Halloween Kills. Which Halloween Kills was bad. But the expectations for a horror sequel reboot... Uh, not very high to begin with, and the movie before it kind of sucked anyway, uh, so it's kind of expected that the second movie is going to suck as well. With The Matrix Resurrections, you had so much potential. Sure, okay, Revolutions, not the best movie ever. Uh, Reloaded, flawed, but you know what? There was potential there. The potential was still here, you know, for, for a really good Matrix movie that would kind of I thought The Matrix Resurrections was going to introduce a new, really cool trilogy. And I don't think this is going to happen. This movie lost money. This is a bad, bad movie. And it's a flop. And it's it's not because of COVID. It's because it's bad. Okay? I don't want to hear any of this. I don't want to hear it's like, well, COVID made it difficult for people. No. 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 If the feedback for this movie had been, hey, The Matrix Resurrections kicks ass. People would have gone to see it, 100%. People would have gone to see it, okay? People went to see Spider-Man No Way Home. That's not even a good movie. Spider-Man No Way Home is not even that good. And people flocked to see that because the, the feedback was so positive. Matrix Resurrections almost came out and then people were just like, what the fuck is this? And then I didn't hear about it, you know, after like a week of its release. So, look, I think um, you should skip this movie i'm not even kidding i don't even think this movie is worth watching as like a curiosity i think you can just straight up skip it watch the original trilogy and just call it a day um if they make another one which is highly highly unlikely uh i i there's now a one percent chance that'll be any good because this was awful and i think i've seen critics you know talk about how they enjoyed parts of this movie and i'm like what part? Like, I don't I don't see how... I think sometimes people have... A bar is very low. But the bar should not be low for something like The Matrix. Because The Matrix was badass. And The Matrix movies should be badass. And you know what? As much as I'm not a huge fan of Revolutions and certain aspects of Reloaded, those movies were badass. They were. Matrix Reloaded is badass. Even the scene where, like, Neo is cartoonishly fighting, like, a hundred Agent Smiths, it's goofy as hell. It's a cartoon, but it's badass, okay? It's one dude fighting a whole bunch of dudes. It's it's epic, okay? Uh, Matrix Revolutions. Even though the stuff, you know, in, the, in Zion is not particularly fascinating, it's just a lot of, you know, big guns shooting at, at you know, machines... Uh, although that can, that some people really like this kind of mech stuff. Um, you still have some cool stuff going on in the Matrix. You have this whole Dragon Ball Z shit going on between Neo and uh, Agent Smith at the end. With the, the whole world is Agent Smith. That's epic. That's badass. What's badass about this freaking movie? What is actually badass? Nothing. Oh, uh, Trinity can fly now. Okay. Fine. Good. Now what? 